Good morning, Nelson family. Welcome to South Africa. You guys ready for your South African venture? We are. Yeah. <laughs> get in, get in, let's go. Get So what are you all currently thinking of your road trip to Oats Wedding so far? Good. Lots of driving so good. far, but good. Yeah. You still hanging in with us, Phil? What's, yeah. What's Hash thinking of it? What do you think of the trip? Um, it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> uh, who's riding? I can. Yeah. I can. <laughs> I'm Austin's riding champion. I'm, I'm a legend in all of Africa. I'm lighter. That means I win. Jason, you out for the for the ride? Yeah, unfortunately, I had too much dinner last night, so I'm out for the oh, ride. Nice. Oh, oh. Um, this farm is about five and a half thousand hectares. For the moment, we've got over four thousand adult birds on the farm permanently, and we do natural breeding and we do incubators. And we in our, at the end of our season now, in our season, we normally get between two to three hundred babies per week. I explain to you how. Okay, first, the feathers we take from them every nine months. And this is one plucking of the male. Okay, the males are black and white. And that's the female. And that's the color of the babies when they're six months old. You run them into a chute, you tie them up, how do you pluck them? Yes, yeah, so we, we have to catch them first. Mm -hmm. Remember, they are very dangerous birds, and one kick can kill you. Mm -hmm. And like a horse, if you cover the head, it comes mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. But we put them in it like in a triangular pit. Yeah. So we put a strap over his back so he can't jump up, a pole down his leg so he can't walk backwards. But luckily, the plucking takes less than two minutes. Because when you pluck them, the feathers are ready to fall out by themselves. Okay. Very good. Yeah, they can have babies two times a year and each time 12 to 16 babies. Okay, how they do it, um, when the male and female mate, the eggs inside the female's body form like a lot of great, a lot of small ones, like a chicken as well. And every second day, one gets released. So she lay one every second day, 12 to 16, depends how many she can cover with her body. But when she's laying them, she don't sit on them. She lay all the eggs first. If she feels her body can't cover more, then she stop. But then happen, the rest of the eggs in her body get taken back by the body. And then she will start sitting there the whole day, here the whole night, for 42 days. The big um, the reason is when she starts sitting with the body heat, the body moisture, all the babies start developing at the same time. And then 42 days later, all will hatch at the same time. Oh, 
So that was your first ostrich ride? It was awesome. It was awesome. <laughs> it's hard to hold on though. Like I'm literally, my hands are slipping. I'm like, I'm down, I'm down, I'm about to die. Get trampled to death by ostriches. <laughs> Zach, we're ready to die. Then I almost went back over its neck because I was trying to lean forward okay, to get so my hand refixed again. Which, which ostrich are you putting your money on? Uh, I think I'm going to go with the red one. I got green. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be a fun job. That'd be a fun job. <laughs> oh, Green's got a cheeky stud. Who was green? 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 <laughs> Somebody else is buying dinner. This is great. Jordan, Jordan, Jordan had him on red. You were, you were getting even. So boys, you ready? Yeah. Walk Africa's big elephant. <laughs> Maybe toilet break, huh? Good morning. Good morning. My name is Patrick and this lovely elephant is Marula and Marula she's the leader of the group, she's the matriarch. So she's the girl that she's in charge, keeps all our elephants in order. She is 24 years old and she weighs about 3,200 kilograms. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, Mana. Thank you, Marula. You're welcome, Princess. Let's hear from the middle one. Good morning. Good morning. morning. My name is Temba, and the elephant name is Jabu. Jabu is a Zulu weight mini happy. She's 23 years of age and weighs about 2.9 tons. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jabu. Let's down. Let's hear from the last one. Give, give, give it right, give it right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Come down, come down. I'm Hanu, and this is our beautiful lady, Tandi. So Tandi means love. She's 22 years old, and she weighs about three times. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Nelson. Now that um, we've arrived in Tetikama, you're all um, ready for this. We're ready. Yeah. Get the cookies to get ourselves geared up. Yeah. Get some uh, energy back into the system. Mm -hmm. Doesn't seem like the cookie has kicked in yet. Give it another ten minutes. There we go. <laughs> Getting a little nervous there, Jordan. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not wrong, mate. Down, is it? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, 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 oh,
morning guys. Um, it's our first morning that we're out. We've got Kevin and Colton with us. Uh, they're both on their first trip to South Africa. Colton's been touring down the garden route for the first few days with his folks and Kevin and Karen got in yesterday after a really long, what, 25 hour flight. But welcome here guys. Um, we're going to start off this morning by trying to find a bushwhack guys. They are quite secretive. But let's just go see what we can see and then uh, after that we'll reload and maybe go look for an impala or a blessback. But good luck guys and enjoy it. Remember we just here to have fun. Don't let much bother you. We're going to wait and just watch this valley for a while, okay? As I say, the bushback, they move very slowly and they live in very thick, steep areas. So we're going to sit here and just watch and then if we see one, we'll go out and stalk it, okay? So you guys just take a seat over here. Get comfortable. Some impala, a different group of impala feeding at the back there. We're gonna go around and try to come over above them and see. But to the left of them, there was a mountain reed buck as well. So hopefully they don't spook them. But this is a different group as to the group we saw this morning. So let's go around and, and see. See what we see. Scales have fallen off. It's actually it's called the leopard tortoise. But yeah, they've normally got these on them. They just fit like that. Okay guys, yeah, we have uh, Kevin made an excellent shot on this common springbuck. Uh, we're actually looking for wildebeest at the moment and then this old lone ram presented itself and Kevin made an excellent shot at about 180 yards. A frontal shot. Kevin, that was a great shot he did where you did well done there. Thank you. You see the one on the right? I'm going to turn the scope up a bit. Can you still see him? Go wait. You need to stand. Sticks high or not? Okay. okay. Wait, wait. Okay, just wait. I thought I saw some place back over here. Just come this way. Come, guys. Second from the left, all right? Take it in the middle of the front shoulder. Okay, reload. You hit him? Yeah. Okay, wait. 
Looks like a good shot. Is the one right on the left? Just wait though. There we go. That is a great 300 yard shot, buddy. Yep, it's a perfect shot, my man. Look at that. Look at your shot. That's what I'm talking about. Very nice one too. But I mean, look at your shot though. It's crazy. It is crazy. It's crazy good. <laughs> Come on, let's have a look at him, yeah. It's a very nice blast, but check it out. Cool, eh? Yeah. Very, very nice. Hold him there. Well done, congratulations on your first African animal. That is a trophy you can be proud of, my friend. And that shot of yours, that's just awesome. Textbook, man. You have a look over here. You see, you know the males and the females have horns on Blessback. Mm. Okay, but this is a male. And one of the characteristics of the male is they've got like white, you could almost say like an ivory looking ring on their horns. Mm. Yeah. And the bases are much heavier. Where females horns, the bases would be maybe down there. That's a male. And uh, as I say, the, the females, they don't have any black on their horns. I mean, any white on their horns, they're all black. And obviously he's got his other attributes of being a male, but <laughs> you can't see that. But when you're looking, when you're hunting, that's what you look for. Nice length. And uh, yeah, so you got yourself a nice trophy here. And we're gonna have to put a little bit of blood in the face. That's just a tradition. possible nice uh, bull here in front of us that we just want to get a closer look at. Hopefully we can get him. See that's what a pushback ram does. Let me that kick push and all the sun pop out. Oh, that would be pretty cool in Hunter's Ball. <laughs> <laughs> the other one was a lot bigger, a lot more mature. out of that thick bush there because it's so flat on that side you could know points to like get a half vantage point which. just like that he's gone
which is a bit herd of bulls who are trying to have a good look at. And they've kind of broken across the valley onto the other side. So we're just going to wait for them to settle down and then we'll start moving again to get a bit better position. Well, we've just been on a long, uh, hard stalk at the moment. We've gone from about, or for about close to two miles on the stalk, and we've come right up through some thick stuff. And the kudu bulls were kind of feeding out, and um, there was a young bull and a cow that we could see. And um, yeah, they must have heard us, and they've spooked, and they've headed over right up onto the top now. So we're gonna go for a bit of a walk. I know everyone's tired, but this is kudu hunting for you. We're going to walk up and over and um, see, oh, see if we can't maybe uh, get the luck of the draw and bump into them again. <laughs> Everyone's favorite part of the trip so far? Rhino. 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 <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> We're in this area, Clayton was here just an hour ago and he drove through past the water down here and he saw a really nice waterbuck bull here and when he left, he left it and it was very relaxed in a thicket down there so we, the wind's good for us and it was not even an hour ago it was here so I've got a thing is a good chance we're going to find the thing. We're going to drive a little bit further along high on the ridge here and then possibly walk down, get the wind right and see if we can get close to the water and start glassing and try to find the thing. So. I think we've got a good chance of getting onto him. It's hard to see, but it's lying down. Kind of brought it to us now, but 
what it's like down there on the water's edge. See the water's edge disappearing. It's lying there. I've got to try to figure out where we can get a clear shot. It's lying broadside. The kind of shot we're going to do is it's lying with its head folded towards its chest, like almost sleeping like this. Its head's up. And then you're going to shoot it. You can see its whole spine, and you're going to shoot as if you want to shoot it in the head, but through the body. And that's going to hit it in the back ribs here and go into the chest. Okay? But okay, so we take it off safety. Okay, so the, the edge of that right hand horn go down through the green brush and squeeze a shot off there. Okay, take your time. And squeeze a shot off there. Go low through that green brush. Well done, Gold. Okay, reload. He's bellowing, so you hit him good in the chest. Okay, just get on him again. Yeah, that shot was perfect, Gold. He bellowed, bellowed, rolled over, and he's not even moving now. Let's just watch him for a bit. A waterbuck is a bigger bodied animal. Good job, Colt. Well done, buddy. Well done, buddy. Colt, last afternoon, last hour of the safari, and we got your beautiful old waterbuck. You know, we had a tough day hunting yesterday, long day, got sunburned a lot, walked many miles, and for it to come together like this, the end of safari to wrap things up, I think it's just wonderful. So, yeah, morning out photographic trip. Came back, we had about two hours left and we decided, you know what, we can't spend those two hours at the end of the safari not hunting. So we went out and, yeah, Clayton had seen an old bull, this old bull um, feeding around the water here. And we decided, well, we might as well go and look for him. And yeah, we put a great stalk on coming down the valley and found him napping on the bank here and put a great shot in. Well done, buddy. Great trophy, great way to end your safari. Well done.